Now, during her unannounced visit to Libya, U.S. chief diplomat Hillary Clinton stated that Washington hopes to see ousted leader Colonel Gaddafi captured or killed. To discuss the situation in Libya and the country's international relations, we're now joined by Annie Mashan, a former MI5 intelligence officer. Thank you for being with us. What do you think about Hillary Clinton's very frank admission there concerning the fugitive colonel? <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, they seek him here, they seek him there. I mean, Colonel Gaddafi has been a very wily foe of the West for many decades, and I don't think he's going to give up without a fight. It's been interesting watching the whole Libyan war unfold over the last few months because they've really been quite unashamed in their statements about, actually, yes, they would quite like regime change, which, of course, is highly illegal, but also interesting to see that they're saying this openly now, whereas, of course, in the 1990s, they were trying to assassinate him covertly uh, through... Uh, proxy organizations in Libya. We now know that some NATO countries have sent advisors to the region. What role are they playing there as you see it? Well, I'm sure they're probably going there with the best of intentions to ensure that uh, humanitarian aid and human rights are upheld. But I have to say that the way that the whole mess in Libya has unfolded, I mean, let's not forget that the uh, UN sanctions uh, change of heart was put in place now, it appears, on very dubious moral grounds and unsubstantiated rumors of genocide in Benghazi. So they're probably going there to try and help. But to be quite frank, what's been going on in places like Certe um, has just been of breathtaking hypocrisy. The West goes in, NATO goes in to bomb Gaddafi's regime out of existence because they're threatening civilians in Benghazi. And now we're looking at a whole uh, range of human rights abuses, not to mention about 80,000 civilians in Certe being bombed by the NATO and uh, TNC forces. And nobody seems to be really stepping up to the mark to try and protect them. Plus, of course, we are hearing a lot of rumours of loyalist soldiers, loyalist forces, or even just people who are suspected of working for those forces, of being arbitrarily snatched, detained, and even tortured, which, of course, goes against all uh, the standard rules of warfare. So Libya is really descending into one awful mess. But still, there's uh, some resistance remaining from Gaddafi loyalists. I mean, the conflict isn't officially over yet. What do you make of the timing of Clinton's visit? I think it's uh, probably a, trying to send out a message of reassurance to the international community and to reinforce the myths that we've been told about NATO humanitarian intervention. Um, Gaddafi was an odious dictator, there is no doubt about it, and he was a thorn in the side of Western countries for three decades. Um, but for the majority of Libyans living in that country who weren't perhaps particularly politically active, um, their, life, their quality of life was perfectly fine. I mean, you know, they had free education, free health, they could study abroad. Uh, when they got married, they were given a certain amount of money. So they were actually rather the envy of uh, many other citizens in African countries. Now, of course, since the NATO humanitarian intervention, the infrastructure of their country has been bombed back to the Stone Age, effectively. They will not have the same quality of life. Women probably will not have the same sort of degree of emancipation under any new transitional government. And um, the national wealth is probably going to be siphoned off by Western corporations. So, yes, Gaddafi was odious. He cracked down on dissidents. He did use torture. But I have to say now, I mean, the West is becoming rapidly morally equivalent to that, where we see uh, dissidents and activists in New York with the Occupy movement. We see dissidents and activists in, across Western Europe being maced and arrested on trumped-up charges. And where, of course, we've now seen plentiful evidence emerging that our Western intelligence agencies have been involved in extraordinary rendition and torture. So the moral equivalence is there. And I think um, perhaps the standard of living in Libya might have been slightly higher than it perhaps is now in America and the UK with the recession. So it's, um, it's rank hypocrisy. All right. Annie Mashan, former MI5 intelligence officer, joining us live on the line from Dusseldorf, Germany. Thank you very much for your analysis.